probably my favorite Lake Champlain story had Jerry and Jason as the central characters. And uh, on this occasion, it was a late morning and we were playing croquet. And uh, Jeff and I and Jason and Jerry. And I don't think we were playing teams. In fact, I know we weren't playing teams. It was an individual uh, competition. And uh, we, we were all very competitive. And, uh, you know, the fact we were older, we didn't let the younger ones win. There was none of that, you know. So, you know, Jerry's at the end of the line. He, he never won anything. That's just the way it went. You know, if you want to win, you got to get better. That was kind of how we were. And so, um, we, you know, we played a few games. We, you know, we had played a few times already on that on that trip. And so um, we're out there again. And in this game, Jerry is he's playing unbelievably He's hitting all the shots, and uh, meanwhile, the, the rest of us, we're doing okay, but you know, every time somebody gets ahead a little, you know, one of the things in croquet, if you make contact with an opponent's ball with your ball, you get to place your ball behind it, and then, you know, hit your ball with the other one against it, and you can launch that ball as, as far away as you, as you can, and, uh, and that obviously makes it tougher for them to come back, so... Uh, you know, if you don't understand how croquet works, basically you have to go through all these different wickets and then at the very end, a final two set of wickets and then hit this stake at the end. The first one to do that, right? So it's almost a little bit of an obstacle course kind of a thing. And uh, in the meantime, all your opponents are, are able to uh, you know, knock you off course if they're able to make contact with your ball. So uh, that's how the game goes. So, so we're going along, and then all of a sudden, you know, Jerry is he's hitting these shots. He's going through the wickets, uh, setting himself up perfectly for the next wicket, knocking it through, and uh, he's get he's all the way down near the end, and he gets to the point where uh, he has to do a setup shot, and he hits it perfectly. So now he's in front of maybe uh, one foot in front of the last two wickets, and the and the stake is right behind them. So when his next turn comes, it, you know, it's like a tap-in putt in golf. It's like a two-foot putt to win the tournament kind of thing. And so now um, the only chance we have is if we can get through a wicket and then uh, from, from long range, because we're all far away, we're nowhere near where he is, uh, if we can make contact with his ball, uh, then we get a chance to, to launch him away from, from there and you know, essentially you know, send him back, almost like snakes and ladders, you know, make the guy start over kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, Jeff and I, you know, fail at trying to uh, make any progress. We, we didn't come close to hitting him. And now, so it comes down to Jason. He has the last chance. And Jason's about 35 feet away uh, from Jerry, his ball. And, uh, and it's uneven ground. You know, it's not like a putting green on a golf course. And so he's got to hit this shot. If he doesn't hit Jerry's ball with his ball, basically Jerry's going to tap it and he's going to win. And, of course, Jerry's got great anticipation. He's never wanted anything. So he's just chomping at the bit to, to make this final shot. And so now uh, Jason tries this thing from 35 feet. He smacks it, and the ball's bouncing around. And it, and it comes, and miraculously, it hits Jerry's ball. So now that Jason's got a free shot to launch Jerry. And the worst part of it is, uh, you know, Jason was nine, Jerry was seven, and they already had a long history of pretty much one-way antagonism, which was Jason always antagonizing Jerry. Uh, I mean, it was it was endless uh, to the point where, as adults, I remember Jason actually apologizing to Jerry for for how he treated him as a child. He actually confessed one summer uh, it was his goal every day to make Jerry cry. How terrible is that? And so, uh, back to the croquet. So Jason hits this miracle shot from 35 feet over a bouncy terrain makes contact with Jerry's ball, and now he's got this big grin on his face. He goes strolling up there because we all know what's going to happen. He's going to line up his ball with Jerry's, and then he's going to smack it, and he's going to knock Jerry's ball, you know, 60 feet away. And he's got this big grin, and he's just, you know, just rubbing it in, just, just you know, looking at Jerry the way he was looking at him. And so sure enough, he does that. And as he's smiling, he's not even looking at the ball. He's smiling at Jerry as he launches it, and Jerry's ball is gone. Jerry loses it. I mean, it was the first time, the only time uh, I've ever seen him totally lose it. He goes running 
to the to the nearest ball. I don't even know whose it was. And uh, he picks up the ball, and Jason can already sense what's going on because he starts running, and Jason's a fast runner. He gets about 25 feet away, and he's just making a beeline to get out of there. And Jerry launches this thing, and the croquet balls are solid balls. I mean, these things are rock hard. Jerry throws this thing, and miracle shot hits Jason in the back of the head. Boom! He goes down like a ton of bricks, and he's lying there holding his head. And then Jerry runs off. He knows he's going to be in big trouble for throwing this croquet ball. And uh, that's that's the standout memory from the Lake Sham plane trip that year was uh, Jerry with this amazing throw to conk Jason on the head. And uh, he didn't win croquet, but uh, I, I think he'll take the uh, you know the accuracy of that last throw as a as a lasting memory on a little bit of revenge on his older brother. Classic.